Hello and welcome to the first of a series of non-technical guides of performing meta-analysis in R. Today, we're going to be looking at assessing study quality in meta-analysis. Now, while meta-analysis is almost a universally accepted approach, a common criticism is that if you include poor quality studies, you will produce a poor quality meta-analysis. That is, garbage in, garbage out. Now, this is a fair assessment as it's possible to have a situation where a poor quality study is providing the same contribution to a summary effect size as a well-designed study. Now, one way to avoid the situation is to set strict inclusion criteria for the studies that are included. However, this method may be too conservative and can lead to smaller meta-analyses. Alternatively, a moderator analysis can be used to assess the potential role of study quality using a pre-registered quality assessment tool. As with clinical trials or experimental studies, journals are beginning to require that submitted meta-analyses have been pre-registered. And considering that meta-analyses are being used to guide health policy, pre-registration is arguably more important for meta-analysis than it is for individual studies and trials. Now, among details of study inclusion criteria, analytic approach, and search strategy, the PRISMA guidelines recommend that a study quality tool, also known as a risk of bias tool, should be included in a meta-analysis protocol. Now, with such a tool, a measure of study quality can be calculated for each study. Now, characteristics that contribute to study quality could include the appropriate section of study participants, that is, how confident are we that participants in these studies assessing social anxiety actually have social anxiety? It could include blinding of participants and study team to any experimental manipulation, and if the met methods can be replicated, just to name a few examples. There are a number of study tools available which reflect the enormous variety in research questions. You may be able to even create your own tool or adapt an available one for the purposes of your meta-analysis. Now, there's a number of resources available for meta-analysis pre-registration, and key study protocol information can be registered at Prospero. Think of this site like clinicaltrials.gov, but for systematic reviews. And full protocols can also be submitted to peer-reviewed journals like Systematic Reviews or PeerJ Preprints. Now, let's have a look at an, at an example meta-analysis, but first we need to load the packages to download the data. So, We'll be using the reader package, which is up here, to pull our data from GitHub and the metaphor package for meta-analysis meta functions. Our downloaded file is a data set with participant numbers, Pearson's R, and a measure of study quality, which goes from one, which is a poor quality study for our example, two, being satisfactory, three, being moderate, four, being good, and five, being very good. Now, let's run the meta-analysis. So, first we load the packages here. Then we'll get the data from the GitHub page. Let's have a look at the data. Here it is there. The same as what we had before. Now the next step is to convert Pearson's R into a z-score and its variance. And we do that with this line here. Now looking back at the dat file, we can actually see these two columns have been added, which looks at Pearson's z and variance here. Now it's time to perform the meta-analysis using a random effects model here. And let's have a look at the results. Now our summary effect size is statistically significant, which is the, uh, the p-value here. Also note the significant study heterogeneity, which I'll come back to later. Okay, the other thing that we want to do, if we want to actually better interpret this, is to convert the z-scores back to Pearson's R, and we'll do that here. So as you can see, um, when you have pretty low Z scores, they correspond pretty closely with Pearson's R. So they're, they're very, very close here. 
And we can also calculate heterogeneity measures with a 95% confidence interval here. Okay, let's have a look at the forest plot. Run it here. Okay, we'll zoom in. So we can see here that there is a significant summary effect size and quite a bit of variation. Some of these studies cross the correlation coefficient of zero, whereas others are much, much further away from the correlation coefficient here. Now the most important step for the purposes of this video is to perform the moderator meta-analysis of study quality. So here, this looks very similar to the first analysis that we did, except we're adding the moderator variable of quality here. Remember, we have a column here with quality ranging from 1 to 5. Okay, let's run that. So what you can see here is that uh, study quality is actually a significant moderator of the summary effect size looking at the test of moderators column here. P-value is lower than 0.05. But what does this actually look like? Well, we can actually plot the meta-regression. And we do that here. Now you can see the, lower, the worst quality studies tend to have higher Fisher Z scores, whereas the better quality studies tend to have lower Fisher Z scores. So in this case, study quality was an important moderator of the summary effect size that we found. Thanks for listening today. Make sure you check out my other video looking at a performing a meta-analysis from start to finish.